What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and tonight we're going to be talking about the 17 plus bundles that are coming in Season 1 Reloaded, a new trailer, plus even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also, as a huge reminder, we got plenty of brand new covers that's going up over on Detonated.com for those out there who prefer articles over videos, and of course, plenty of tweets every single hour on Detonated's Twitter. Now, the good news is Warzone now officially works. Everything is back online. Nobody should be stuck in a fetching online profile loop when they boot up the game mode. Champion's Quest has also been re enabled by Raven Software. And as we talked about earlier today in my afternoon video, Ranked Play is now live for MW3 multiplayer. So for those out there that missed out on the 77 plus rewards you can earn by playing MW3 Ranked, that video will also be linked down below. But I'm aware, I know Season 1 Reloaded's release was a bit disastrous. Quite a few things were broken, quite a few things got delayed. But I do think over the next few days and early next week, a lot of fixes should be dropping inside of MW3 and even Warzone. But we did get a new trailer earlier this morning for the new collab with The Boys featuring the A-Train and Firecracker Operator Bundles. We still don't know the release dates of either of these two packs, but tomorrow's Friday, which typically means we'll get a new bundle added in, so I wouldn't be shocked if one of those does get added into MW3. It probably won't be both of them, just one of them, but I'm sure they'll both end up being released before the end of next week. Now, it is confirmed at the end of the trailer, though, that all three original bundles from MW2's The Boys collab are going to be back for a limited time in the MW3 item shop. That includes Homelander, Black Noir, and even Starlight. I already saw Starlight back in my shop as of the other day, so I guess Homelander and Black Noir are going to quickly follow, probably over the the next week and a half, just before the end of Season 1. But the finishing moves do look absolutely fantastic, as we got a glimpse of in the new trailer today. But hackers obviously went ahead and force-loaded these new operators into MW3, and you can fully get a glimpse of both bundles for A-Train and Firecracker. The A-Train pack does come with the skin himself, two blueprints, a finisher, a loading screen, decal, emblem, calling card, and even a charm. But the finisher looks absolutely mental, kind of just reminiscing on some scenes that we did see in the boys' TV show. And then for the Firecracker bundle, the finishing move is also pretty bad as pretty funny features the skin herself we got two blueprints a finisher decal emblem calling card and even a charm and before we continue with further bundles for the mid-season one update and some other announcements here's a word from today's sponsor now tonight's video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is the most complete vehicle combat experience ever developed. You can use more than 2,000 tanks, helicopters, ships, and planes in real PvP battles. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed down to their individual parts, which offers a real immersive gameplay experience. War Thunder is free to play on PlayStation, Xbox, and even PC. If you're looking for a fast action-packed match or even something tactical that's rooted in realism, then War Thunder has you covered with intense battles for all playstyles. Now for those who love customization in their games won't be disappointed with War Thunder, as there's hundreds of camouflages and historical markings you can place anywhere on your vehicles. You can even equip 3D decorators like bushes and equipment. War Thunder doesn't require any extra pilot hardware, as you can fly any aircraft using just a mouse and keyboard, thanks to the intuitive mouse aim mode, or you can choose to use a controller. The game offers incredible detail in 4K resolution, with some of the most authentic sound effects and music that create an atmosphere you likely haven't seen. I'm personally blown away by the amount of action I've seen in-game, which had no impact on the game's performance. Typically, if there's too much going on in certain games, you'll notice stability issues, but War Thunder honestly runs smooth as butter. But be sure to check out War Thunder for free on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC with a special link down below in the video's description or the pinned comment. Now, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring tonight's video. Now, obviously, with the release of Reloaded, the usual data miners over on Twitter have posted lots of new information that does apply to Season 2 and beyond. And what they went ahead and confirmed, based on the data mine from the recent patch, is they were supposed to be seeing two more crossover events with the boys. As I brought up in a video just the other day, the actual event that we got added with Reloaded wasn't the event they initially marketed, nor was it the event that was mentioned in the patch notes. So clearly, there's another event that's just around the corner featuring a different set of challenges and rewards, on top of another XP-focused event, which will feature a Vought-themed camo, and it's an XP-focused event that does kind of go along with the release of the A-Train Operator Bundle, so that'll probably end up dropping at some point next week, whenever the bundle does, and if you run the A-Train Operator, you'll get an XP boost towards that event. So two more collabs before the end of Season 1, unless they save these for future seasons, which I completely doubt, and also when it comes to a Walking Dead collab, we got new updates on that. So not only did the Rick and Michonne Operator names get that in mind, but there is a Lucille-themed Barbed Wire Universal Camo, which is clearly tied to a Walking Dead collab, right? It's referenced as such in the game's files, so I'm going to guess that's going to be something we end up seeing in Season 2 to go along with the release of the new spin-off show, The Ones Who Live, which is also going to be a show featuring Rick and Michonne. We're apparently also going to be seeing a Warhammer 40k type of celebration within Call of Duty. It's unknown what the content's going to be with that collab. Will it just be a bundle? Will it be an in-game challenge event? It's unclear what that will entail. That's probably for a future season, not Season 1 or maybe even Season 2, but that is something that is going to be coming to the game in the future. Now, aside from the A-Train and Firecracker bundles, which kind of 
of got fully previewed with the new trailer, and I know Datamine has already posted several pieces of gameplay of these Operator skins and finishers, there are 15 other packs to expect, which should be dropping before February 7th. That's the supposed start date of Season 2, according to the in-game Battle Pass timer, but here's the other sets of packs that we should be seeing over the next few weeks. We first up have the Cryptids Heart of Ice Ultra Skin. Not sure why it's called an Ultra Skin. I think that's been a really misused label in a lot of bundles in MW3. Usually an Ultra Skin is heavily animated or reactive, features Tracer Blueprints, but no, this is apparently an Ultra Skin that doesn't feature Tracer Blueprints, but there are two Blueprints still featured in the pack, a Loading Screen, Calling Card, a Charm, and even a Double XP Token. Now we then have the Tracer Pack Starforge Pack, which will feature two Blueprints with Galactic Tracers and Vortex Dismemberment. Also in the pack, we have what looks like a Loading Screen Emblem, a Decal Calling Card, and even a Charm. We then have what is called the Tracer Pack Clear Cut, which apparently hasn't been force loaded into any hacker's game yet. It may have been a pack that got pushed back to Season 2, but as of right now, the artwork for the pack did get data mined, so it's unclear when exactly it's going to drop, but apparently it will feature three blueprints with RGB tracers, which sounds pretty exciting. We next up have the Tracer Pack Oathbreaker, which will feature two blueprints with Heavenly Tracers and Divine Dismemberment. Also in the pack, we have an emblem, a sticker, a calling card, and even a charm. We next up have the Sketched Out Tracer Pack, which does feature a cell shaded skin. It looks absolutely mental. A lot of people have been talking about this over on Twitter. This will feature two blueprints featuring the screen tone tracers and action panel dismemberment, as well as an aftermarket part on the MCW. You're also going to be seeing a loading screen, what looks like an emblem, a sticker, a calling card, and even a charm. So it's cool how we've seen a couple of cell shaded skins added into the game over the years. I'm sure we'll see even more over the next couple of months. We next up have the Tracer Pack Scarab Pack, which got teased all the way at the beginning of Season 1 during some of the initial Cadmus marketing in one of the blog posts. This is a pack that's finally coming out, so this Tracer Pack will end up featuring two blueprints, as well as Toxic Insectide Tracers, and on top of that, you're going to see a loading screen, an emblem, a decal, and even a calling card. We next up have Tracer Pack to the Moon, featuring two blueprints with Volatile Tracers and a Cash Out Dismemberment effect. You're also going to be seeing a loading screen, an emblem, decal, calling card, and even a charm. Again, prices do vary here. We're not sure what they exactly are, just based on these leaks, and there's also no release dates that got published by Call of Duty officially like they used to do, nor have there been any leaked release dates by the usual data miners. We have a new pro pack also coming out before the end of Season 1 called Tex Lux, which is going to, of course, cost 20 real dollars and will reimburse you with 2,400 COD points. So that'll be $40 of value for just the price of 20. You're going to be seeing an operator skin, two blueprints. We're going to also see an emblem, a weapon decal, a calling card, and even a charm. We then have the Tiger Paw Pack, which will feature just two blueprints. We also have a calling card, what looks like a weapon sticker, an emblem, and even a charm. So not too much going into that pack. But next up, we have the Squeak Bubble Bundle. And this will only have one blueprint, an emblem, a weapon decal, a calling card, and then a charm there towards the end. A very inexpensive pack, most likely. We then have the Wildlife Rubber Duck Bundle, which <laughs> looks pretty hilarious. And I wonder how many more animal-themed bundles and skins we're going to end up seeing inside of MW3. But this pack will feature the Operator Skin, the Rubber Duck. We're also going to see two blueprints that I don't believe feature tracers at all here. But then we also have an emblem, a calling card, a weapon sticker, and then a charm there to round all of that out. We next have the Spare Ribs Bundle, which is kind of a sequel to a previous pack that released featuring X-Ray themed blueprints. And this one is, again, very similar. We got no tracers on here, but we got two blueprints, an emblem, weapon sticker, a calling card, and even a charm. Very cool looking blueprints here in which you can see the bones through the actual weapon. Again, very similar to the X-Ray one we got just a couple of weeks ago. Coming towards the end, we have the Quart Zite Pack, which will probably also be pretty inexpensive. Only one blueprint there for the striker. We also have an emblem. We have what looks like a calling card, a weapon decal, and then a double weapon XP token. Next up, coming towards the end, we have the Bit Jaded Pack, only featuring one blueprint there for the MTZ556. No tracers, but we have an emblem, weapon sticker, a calling card, and lastly, even a charm. And then, last but not least, we have the Aztec Coded New Weapon Bundle. So, this is interesting, right? This will feature a blueprint for the MCW 6.8, and then we also have another blueprint there for an unknown weapon, probably another MTZ, but then we also have what looks like a loading screen, an emblem, a weapon sticker, a calling card, and even a charm. Those are all new bundles coming, reportedly, before the end of Season 1. Again, these are all subject to change. Some could get pushed back. Some might release at the very last minute. I mean, who exactly knows, but I'll keep you guys posted with what exactly is going on with bundles for those out there that do care about cosmetics inside of Modern Warfare 3. Now, don't forget to download War Thunder for free for any platform. The special link in this video's description or the pinned comment, and you can also go ahead and claim a massive content pack, which I detailed on screen. With that being said, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring tonight's video. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. That's everything we know so far about all cosmetics and packs that are releasing before the start of Season 2. Let me know which pack is your favorite. How do you feel about the new trailer for the boys' collaboration? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.